Well, this morning, I want to talk to you about expectations. And uh, we're going to be talking about the law of expectations. And so again, just so you'll know, just like there are natural laws in the, in the created universe, like gravity, you know, and I've used this illustration. I mean, I could drop my keys like a bazillion times, and it's going to fall every single time. There's a law of gravity. Well, I want you to also know that there is laws in the kingdom of God. There's the law of sowing and reaping, and, the, and there's the law that says if you, what you sow, you reap. If you, if you plant uh, green beans, you don't get corn. What you sow is what you reap. That's a law. Uh, another, another law that we, c- we can talk about, too, is that what you use increases, and what you don't use, you lose. So there are these laws that exist. Now, again, I want to talk to you about the law of expectations, now, we talk all the time about expectations, and so when, when someone, um, uh, you know, uh, becomes pregnant, we say they are expecting a baby. And uh, what happens is, is that uh, my mom would say, boys, make sure you clean up all your stuff. We're, we are expecting company. So I want to talk to us about this law of expectation and say that every single person in this room has expectations. And the law of expectation very simply says this, that our expectations shape our experience. So that's the law. So I was, was, I was helping um, kind of go through some stuff and thinking about this. And so one of the wonderful things is, is I walked down the hall and I talked to Danny Hunt, who does such a great job with our graphics. And we were talking about, well, what do I want to create or what kind of a picture? And so this is a rose. And not only is it, it's a bud and it's got little wa- water droplets. And so what happens is expectations, like, like flowers, they have to be watered. I'm really looking forward to this. And so he said, hey, if you're going to talk about the law of expectations, you got to be able to give us something that's the same. So here it is. The law of expectations that our expectations shape our experience. So what I find really interesting is that uh, my dad used to say, if you, if you want to uh, uh, feel young, um, be with young people. If you want to die young, try to keep up with them. And uh, one of the things that I'm observing is that, you know, that, that the world that shaped me and the world that's shaping our young people are not the same. Now, one of the things that I have observed about these young people that we are graced to have with us, I've watched it, that, that the issue is that expectation greatly shapes the experience. So they say, hey, what are you doing? Oh, we're hanging out. What are we going to do? I don't know, but we're going to hang out. We're going to have an awesome time. And so what happens is that they have an expectation that they're going to have an awesome time. So guess what? They have an awesome time. Now, those of us baby boomers is, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to know we're going to have a good time? But there's just this law of expectation that when whatever you expect will inform you. So our, our expectations shape our experience, but I also have a corollary. Those of you who are mathematical, you remember in, in, in geometry, you've got all these corollaries. There's this truth, and then there's other things. I also want to invert this by saying that your experience also shapes your expectations. So both are true. So the thing is, that we all have these expectations, and so I, I have the opportunity. I haven't done it for a while. I'm, you know, again, uh, it's been a while since I've done a wedding, and um, now I seem to be the, 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 the burying pastor, you know, because those are the people that I'm in relationship with, and, you know, that, you know, our younger staff, Pastor Danny, he's the one who's getting all the marriages. Well, once upon a time, I used to do pre-marriage preparation. And there's this whole chapter in the book that we use, and it's called Expectations. And so it's interesting. I'll sit down, and I'll start asking, and I'll say, well, you know, talk to me about your expectations. And and on more than one occasion, you know, they come in, they're all starry-eyed, and and it goes something like this. Oh, I just have no expectations. I just want him to love me. I just want her to love me. It's going to be wonderful. It's just great. I have no expectations. And I'm looking at him, and I'm saying, turn the page, please. (laughs) 
And, and there's this exercise. And so it's all about, about a list of expectations. And so there's, you, have to, you have to grade it. Like, is it going to be a cinch? Is it going to be, you know, sweat? Or is there going to be no way? And so I'll start asking the questions. Like, I'll say, okay, do you expect your spouse to help you clean up? I hadn't thought about that. I just assumed that they would. It's an expectation. Well, what else? You know, do, do you expect your husband to pick up his clothes off the floor? Or does your husband expect you to pick up your clothes off the floor? What about holidays? Do, do you expect your spouse to go with you? to see your side of the family? Do you expect them to be part of it? So there's all of these expectations. So we have expectations that we're aware of that are out in front of us. And most of the time, it's those expectations that we're aware of that are, are not the problem for other people. It's the, un, it's the unspoken and the hidden expectations. And it goes like this. I thought... I expected, I assumed. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about is I want to talk in terms of what does this law of expectations do? So our expectations shape our experience and our experience shapes our expectations. And so in the midst of all of this, like I had a lot of notes and, and, and uh, but I want to really share out of my heart. See, what happens is that if you have been disappointed, one of the things that you do is you begin to not have expectations. Because if you have no expectations, then you can't be disappointed. If you expect somebody to come over and they don't, you get disappointed. But if you say nobody's going to come over and they don't come over, it's okay. And so... My good friend, Pastor Barry McGavin, who's my pastor, and, and he says, blessed is him or the person who doesn't have expectations for they will surely not be disappointed. And so one of the things that I want to talk to you about is that this law of expectations comes into play with your relationship with people. It comes into play in your relationship with others, and it comes into your relationship with God. Now, again, I want to make sure that we anchor something. Turn with me if you're in your Bibles to Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And so this story, you can, you can read it, but this story, I'm going to tell it to you because the wind is blowing, and if I open my Bible, my nose are going to fly over, and then I'm really in trouble. But remember what happens says that there was this man, he was a beggar, and he was sitting by, thank you, by the gate, beautiful, and it's actually these ones up here that are the trouble, so that's, it's okay, you can keep those on, it's just there's this wind tunnel up here. And so this guy, he was sitting there, and he was sitting by the gate, beautiful. And, you know, he would have been doing what beggars do. He was there hoping and expecting that someone would give him something. So Peter and John, they're on their way to pray. It's a good thing. And I've thought about this long and hard. I can't imagine that this guy wasn't sitting there at that gate when Jesus walked past that gate. And I can't imagine that Peter and John hadn't walked by him. Now you say, well, that sounds terrible. What do you mean Jesus was, was ignoring people? I believe that what happens is, is that we see possibilities that are not occurring to us when we have a spirit of expectation. So who knows? Maybe he was sitting there, maybe... He was sleeping, or maybe he was at his head down, or whatever. But for whatever reason, there, there came this point of time where expectations gave way to the miraculous. So basically, 
he would have said, this is my take on it. He would have said, alms for the poor, alms for the poor. And when I was in Israel a long time ago, you know, the little kids, they would say, bakshish, bakshish, bakshish. You know, they're looking for something. And so basically what happens is, is that Peter and John are on their way to prayer. And isn't it wonderful that they weren't religious? They didn't say, well, we can't stop and talk to this guy. After all, we've got important things to do. But what happens is that this guy, and it says that he looked up and it said, and he, they said, look at us. And he looked up expecting to get something from them. It's a principle, the law of expectation. I think that one of the reasons why people are so burned out and so stressed out is because that they have given up on expectations and dreaming. And when you give up on expectations, you give up on hope. And when you give up on expectations, then life becomes very, very empty. I think it also recreates difficulties because the law of expectation plays a huge role in whether we meet with God or not when we come together like this. So I'm not banging on you, whatever, but I ask myself this question. I says, was I looking forward? Was I anticipating? Did I have an expectation this morning that I would be touched by God? I did. And because I did, I am. Have we become so jaded and hardened out of protection because we just can't experience another disappointment that we quit dreaming. It says, he looked up at them expecting something from them. So there was an expectation. Now, one of the wonderful things is, is that he had one set of expectations, but the Holy Spirit had another. He was expecting them to give him money. And so you remember, and I remember the little song, it says, you know, Peter and John, it says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he was walking and leaping and praising God. And he, the guys, they looked at him and says, look, you have one set of expectations, but there's a whole other scene here that we want to say, silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we give now to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the guy, he was expecting to receive something. He was in what they call in the marketing world, the hot zone. It's kind of like what happens with, with timeshares, why people come home having bought timeshares that they weren't going to buy when they're on holidays. Because they're in a hot zone. They're, hey, this was wonderful. And somebody comes along and says, hey, you could do this again. Just sign up on the dotted line. That's another story. He was expecting. So I want to ask you this question as we work our way through this. Have you given up expecting God to do things for you? Have you given up expecting God? relationships? Have you given up expecting that you can be fulfilled and you can have peace? Now, we all have these expectations. No expectations, no disappointments. The other question is, is about expectations is, is are they realistic? And that plays a huge role in this that one of the challenges that I see in our world, because they don't understand the source of who fulfills expectations, that we have these unrealistic expectations. And what happens is we're set up for failure. We're doomed, in fact, in the natural. So again, I remember once upon a time, I can remember I was in grade five, Mr. McMillan, and we were talking about you can, you can have whatever job you want. Everybody can have a job that's going to fulfill them. Everybody's going to do well. And, you know, it was, it was the late 60s and the early 70s, and there was a lot of jobs. But the reality is, is that, that I don't know about you, but lots of people, lots of people 
do not have a job that is fulfilling. So you have to find your fulfillment somewhere else. Are your expectations realistic? Are they realistic? Like, I'm going to be, everybody's going to be a, a multimillionaire. Wouldn't that be nice? Or not? Or my expectations is, is that my life is going to start here and it's going to go straight up like this and I'm never going to have any difficulties. I'm never going to have any hardship. All of those things. I've got these expectations. And when life gets hard, then we say, God, I'm disappointed. You ever been disappointed? <laughs> People let you down? Circumstances don't unfold the way you expect. I want us to adopt a millennial approach to expectations. I want to pray, I want to prophesy over us that we can begin to dream again. It comes back to what we put up on the wall on Vision Sunday. And that we can have expectations. We say, God, when I come to church, I expect for you to speak to me. And guess what? Like the millennials said, we're hanging out. It's going to be awesome. And because they believe it's going to be awesome, their expectation is, it is. And so I want to encourage us this summer and forever after that we come expecting God to move. Now, I, I you know, I, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, John and Kay, you know, they... They were here for many years, and now they're in Elam, and it's too hard for them to get over here. And, and I talked to them about how, what happened in the 70s? What, what, what happened to you that, that caused you to go from just attending church to understanding what church could be? And they will talk about the Satera twins. I've never met them, but there was this, there was this meetings that were going on. And, and I said, talk to me about it. And it says, they would come to church, and they would come early, and it wasn't anything that was earnest. But what happened is they said, we would come early, and somebody would just start singing. And we would just join in. And... You know, it wasn't a pre-service. It was the service because they came with expectant hearts. What would happen for you? What would happen for me? What would happen for us if we came with expectant hearts every Sunday? What would happen if we got up and every Sunday we just believed that he would meet with us and that we would be used by him and others would be used to bring words of encouragement. What would happen if I woke up every day and I, like the prophet Jeremiah, would say, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Use me today. Speak to me today. I want to feel your presence. Today's going to be awesome. Our expectations inform our experience, but our experience informs our expectations. And that can happen on both sides. So I'm hoping you're seeing there's kind of two sides to this. One is when you have expectations that things are going to be awesome, then when you really have that, then you're going to look for awesome. If you feel your expectations are going to be to be disappointed, you will be disappointed. So one of the things that's so important to me is I, I can't live in disappointment. I can't live with the expectation of failure. I can't live with the expectation of loneliness. I can't live with the expectation that things aren't going to work out. Because when I embrace that, that's what becomes my reality. So last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was I preached the last, we were talking about focus. I think it was last week. I didn't know it all runs together for me. Remember we said that your eyes, wherever your eyes are, that's where you're, you're drawn to. 
Satan wants to kick expectations out of you. And this morning, when we end at, at the end and we're going to be doing some more ministry time, I really believe that God wants to stir faith in us. I believe that God wants to meet you at a very important place. We all have expectations. We all do. Now, what about expectations and feelings? Feelings are valid because we feel them. So you've heard me talk about this. Nothing will tick me off more than somebody says, I know how you're feeling. And right akin to that is, I know how, what you're thinking. And let me tell you, when people say that to me, I just tense up. I says, no, you don't know how to, what I'm thinking or what I'm feeling. It belongs to me. So feelings are valid. So I'm not here to just, it's not mind over matter and where I'm saying, oh, you've got to walk around and says, I'm going to be happy, I'm really happy. And if I just think it hard enough, I don't believe that. But I'm talking about an expectation that God is good that God loves you, that he has a plan for your life. And when you feel disappointed, don't stuff it, acknowledge it, but then begin to say, okay, God, what are you doing in the midst of this disappointment that can help me be what you want me to be? Because what happens is I miss things sometimes because I have one set of expectations but God has something totally different for me. So what can I expect from others, from myself, and from God? Let's start first with what can I expect from myself. I can expect that with God's help, that I can have his peace. And what can I expect from others? People are going to let you down. Have you noticed that? But what I believe, coming back to the law of uh, sowing and reaping, that if I sow understanding, then I'm going to get understanding. If I sow love, I'm going to receive love. If I sow joy, I'm going to get love. That's the law of, 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 of sowing and reaping. What can I expect of myself? I can expect of myself to do my best. That's all, I, that's all God ever asks of us. What can I expect from God? I can expect his unconditional love. I can expect that he will be with me. I can expect that he will provide for my needs. So related concepts, prejudice, where I show up with a preconceived notion about what things are going to look like, and then when they unfold in a different way, I get disappointed, and disappointment gives way to either despair or anger. What would have happened if that guy would have said, look, I don't want you to heal me. I don't want to stay a beggar. I want you to give me money. And I wonder sometimes if we aren't content because we have a preconceived notion it's easier to stay a beggar than it is to walk. Now that sounds really counterproductive, does it? I know people like that. Well, if I get better, I have to go back to work. If, if I get better, I've got to start taking care of myself. Anticipation. If your experience has been that it's hard to expect good things because your experience says that when I expect, I'm always disappointed, that becomes your reality. My dad and I were talking about this, and this is all connected to endurance as well. So one of the reasons why it's so hard for people to really believe that God wants to do good things and expect good things is because their experience says something different. Now, for my life, 
most of my life anyways, that when things get tough, my experience is, is if I'll just hang in there, it'll get better. But there's a lot of people that when things get tough, their life experiences is only gets worse. So what I've said to people like that is, is so in the midst of that, so good things, so love, so God's anticipation, so, so that you can believe that God's really going to work on it. So what happens is when bad things are happening in the bumper crop of bad choices that you made, it comes to a point where all of a sudden you start to reap the other things and you start to see the things that God wants to do in your life. Hope. And hope does not disappoint. Faith. I want to wrap this up by looking at Psalm 5, verse 3. And here's what the psalmist says. He says, in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in anticipation. I wait in expectation. I wrote down something here. We, this is what the world says, hope for the best and expect the worst. Have you heard that one? This is what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us this morning. Hope for the best and expect the best. Hope for the best and expect the best because if you're expecting the worst, that's what you'll see close with this story and then we ask the worship team to come up and we're going to just spend some time giving opportunity for there's a, if there's some ministry that needs to happen. So my, this is one of my dad's stories. This, some of you have heard this, but it, it fits here. The law of expectation. Back when people used to have pump gas this couple was moving into this new town and they were looking down into the town and they stopped at a gas station outside the town and they said, what kind of people are you going to find? Well, what are we going to find here? We're just moved. What kind of people are we going to find? And gas attendant says, well, what kind of people did you leave? Well, they were bitter and cliquish and we were just so glad to leave that place. And the gas attendant looked at him and says, that's the kind of people you'll find. Another couple of days went by, and it was the moving season, and another truck rolled up. Same question. Hey, we've just moved, and tell us what kind of people we're going to find in this new city we're going into. And the gas attendant looked at him and says, well, tell us, tell me, but what kind of people did you leave? They were so wonderful. They were so loving. We just hated leaving there. We cried on our way out. And, the, and will we find people like that? And the gas attendant looked at him and says, you're going to find exactly those kind of people because of what you expect. So I'm going to ask the musicians to just start to play. And I just want to uh, just ask you to close your eyes. And we want to just be open to what God wants to do. But I, I have the first part. Some of you have given up on expectations. And the Holy Spirit wants to restore that hope. So this morning, I want to just pray for you that, that you can embrace the fact that you can hope for the best and you can expect for the best because morning by morning new mercies you can see but if that's not your present experience I want to pray that it can be nobody's looking around but if that's you I want to, would you raise your hand I want to pray for you yeah 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 thank you yeah so would you pray with me Holy Spirit Lord I was up early early this morning praying about this I can't make this happen but you can Lord, around this place, God, that, that life has kicked things out of people. Life has squeezed things out of people. Life has disappointed people. And Lord, as hands went up around this, Lord, I pray, Father, first and foremost, I pray, God, that, Lord, that 
you would create something spiritual and something new that no human being can. Lord, we speak, Lord, life, and we speak hope, and we speak faith where that's been kicked out. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to, to adopt the same perspective that that man said he looked up expecting. And he said he received more than he could even hope or think. And I pray this, Father, for these that have raised their hands. In Jesus' name. Could I just ask the worship team to sing the song they're playing and just, I just feel that God's got more for us this morning. Maybe you have a word of encouragement or maybe you have a word of exhortation or maybe you have a word of, of knowledge or maybe you have a word of, 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 of just prophetic insight. But we're gonna just create a place. We're gonna expect God to meet you at your point of greatest need. Let's, let's sing together. certain things and I felt like I was supposed to share those things with you so just stay in the place with the Lord close your eyes I just want you to hear what the Lord wants to speak to you and it's essentially what he was speaking to me for myself as well but something that stood out to me is that Peter said to the beggar he said and I just highlighted I don't have so he said I don't have what you think you need but I'll give you what I do have in the name of Jesus and I know I felt like the Lord was saying that for some of you you feel like you don't have what you need you don't have what you want you don't have what you feel you want to give to other people in your life that you love but what stood out to me is that what Peter was giving this man was Jesus. He wasn't giving him anything else. It was just Jesus. And it goes on further and it says, 
that he took the lame man by the right hand and he helped him up. And it was just this expectation for Jesus to do something. And later on it says, you know, people surrounded after the man got up and his ankles were instantly strengthened, but it took a step of faith on Peter's part. But I want to emphasize, because what stood out to me as I was highlighting further in in, uh, verse 12, Peter said to the crowd after, he said, what is so surprising about this? And why stare at us as though we had made this man walk, and this is the key, by our own power or godliness. And I think for some of us, myself included, is that we blame ourselves for those things that disappoint us in our life, for those areas where we feel like we're failing. And it's big things, it's little things, it's where we feel like we're failing our kids or people around us, ourselves, in our marriages, maybe in our business, at our work. It's not our own power, it's not our own godliness. We do not possess within ourselves that which we hope for for the world and for ourselves and for our families and our loved ones. It's just Jesus. It's he that has to show up. It's him that we need. I need him really, really bad because when I don't have Jesus, I am a rotten dad and a rotten husband and a rotten person. And I think most of us are in the same boat. We can hold it together for a little bit, but when the pressure and the heat really turns up, we all seem to kind of fall apart. So he goes on to say in 13, for it is the God of Abraham has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this and that's that's the key there it's about Jesus it's for Jesus and it's to him be the glory and he set it up that way so we can't get the glory it's not about how strong we are it's not about how good we are and so in those moments in those areas where we're feeling like Tom said where life has really beaten you up It's Jesus that needs to enter into the situation. It's not pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. It's not, oh, I got to do a better job and beat myself up more. Or I don't have enough power. I need to do this, you know. You know, self-help is great, but self-help is all about your own power. And we do not possess the power to change ourselves. A lot of us know that. We've tried. It's the, there's only one power on this earth that can do that, and that is the name of Jesus. That is Jesus, the person. It's not just the name. It's, it's in his name, but it's him as a person, Jesus. So, Lord, I just ask that you would enter in for each and every person here into their circumstances, into their situations, Lord. Lord, myself included, Lord, where we feel like we failed, Lord, where we feel like we don't measure up. Lord, where we feel like we have done everything within our power, Lord. We have tried to be good enough. We've tried to be godly enough, Lord. And we've fallen flat on our faces, Lord. It's not working. Or it's like we're trying to hold together, Lord, a model of popsicle sticks with with glue, and it's just not working. Lord, I just ask that you would enter into those situations and circumstances, Lord. Jesus, enter into those places, the broken places of our life, Lord. Enter in, Jesus. And as we lean into you, Lord Jesus, that it wouldn't even be our strength in our faith or our hope or determination, but that, Jesus, that even unexpectedly, that you would strengthen our ankles instantly, Lord, as you did for that beggar, Lord. Lord Jesus, we pray this in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray that there would be encouragement for your people, Lord. Lord, you keep care about each and every person here, Lord. Just encourage them today, Lord. Encourage them this week, Lord. I pray that you would strengthen their ankles, Lord, as they as they lean into you, Lord. As they lean into you, Lord, strengthen their ankles, Lord. Help them to get up, Lord. Not by their own power, not by their own godliness, Lord. By, by your yes. name, by the name of Jesus. Yes. We pray, Jesus, enter into this situation. Lord, Jesus, enter into our church, Lord. Yes. Jesus, enter into our yes. meetings, Lord, Father yeah. God, into our youth, Lord, into our children, Lord, 
into our neighborhoods, I pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to affirm that was from the Holy Spirit. So here's what we need to do. Just would you close your eyes and again, just want to make sure we're being obedient. Lord, we just, again, I, we, I pray, Father, that that, that exhortation, that, that it just really resonates and it gets planted deeply in us. Okay, nobody's looking around. I'm asking you for, for a lot of trust here, but some of you that, that you, you, need to, you just need to receive healing in the sense that you just this thing about your expect you just have expectations of yourself that are just unmeetable outside of Jesus but you just feel you just feel really that you've just disappointed yourself and you've disappointed God and you've disappointed other people and I just have that sense God wants to really set you free there's somebody here that really God wants to set you free you've lived in disappointment and in unrealistic expectations and that what Peter just said by the power of the spirit all you have to do is just be Jesus. But if that's you this morning, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we, I was praying this morning. God, we pray. Lord God, it's not, we're not playing games. We're not just going through the motions. But oh, Lord God, we need you. And Lord God, as we, we look up, Lord, you have given, you can give us all that we need. For these who have raised their hand, that, 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 Lord God, there would be a freedom. There would be a freedom, a freedom, a freedom in Jesus' name. Nobody's looking around again. This one's pretty, but I just had this keen sense when Peter mentioned this in his exhortation. Some of you just feel a, a real failure in your marriage. And you feel disappointed and you feel hurt. You feel angry. You don't know whether you should be mad at your spouse or mad at yourself or but, but I just had this keen sense this morning that God wants to just, just give you a new set of expectations regarding, regarding your marriage. Nobody's looking around, but if that's you, I want to pray for you this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I think there's some other. Yeah, I see that hand. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else? So, Father... We can't do this, Lord. We can't do this. Is what what was said about what what we said. It, it's Jesus, and so Lord, I'm believing God that, Lord, that the law of expectation is going to kick in. Instead of seeing what's wrong, let them see what's right. Instead of seeing what's impossible, let them see what you can do. But we ask this, we pray this, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.